Lincoln. Um, or if you'd like a little electric candle, we can give you one to see the hymn book. Would anyone like an electric candle to see the hymn book? Are you okay? Can you pass me some electric candles? Give me the tray. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to come around with the tray. I don't know if it will help. Would anyone like to try an electric candle to see the book behind? No? No? One? Yes, grab one, pass one. Grab one, pass one. The white one is better. Hopefully the battery will last. Okay. You guys want one? I'm not sure if it will help or not. Try the white one because it will be clear alive. Anybody want to try? Try the white one. They're a year old so they might be dying anyway. Just to help see the words. Alright. Now, um, in fact, uh, we, we practiced this last year, but you may not have been here. And uh, this is kind of around with the men and the women. Let me first um, teach it to you, and then I'll explain how the men and the women's parts go. So, uh, first of all, it's a very simple chorus. It goes like this. The light of Christ has come into the to 21 or 20. 21. We don't want to freeze, so I know your head. It's very precious, but we don't want to freeze it. All right. Good luck. You guys will figure it out. Two is enough, Professor. Have a rest. Can somebody get him a proper seat, a plastic seat, please? No, no, he's not fine. It's not that cool. Thank you. All right. All right, would you turn um, to your bulletin sheet? 
This is a service um, which is kind of made up liturgy because you might imagine New Year's Eve is not a Christian liturgical occasion. Jesus did not have a New Year's Eve. He had a Good Friday, he had a Christmas when he was born, he had an Easter when he died and rose again, but he didn't have a New Year's Eve, you understand. It's not a liturgical New Year's Eve. So this is a made-up service that the Christians have used to make the first act of the New Year an act of worship and reception of the Eucharist together, to begin the year in worship and adoration of our Lord. The themes of the service are, are the light, of Christ, which has come at Christmas, so we're celebrating that. And also the time of God, the times that God gives us in our life, because we're reflecting on the issue of time. And the third theme is the name of God, because this Sunday is the Feast of the Holy Name, which is, of course, what is the Holy Name? The Holy Name is Jesus. Uh, eight days after Jesus was born, his parents took him uh, to be circumcised, as was the custom. And at his circumcision, he was named what? Jesus. He was named Jesus. And what does Jesus mean? Savior. Savior. Because the angel said he came to save us from our sin. So you'll hear that in the gospel reading tonight. So we're celebrating the light of Christ. We're celebrating the time that God has given us. And reflecting on that, and we're celebrating the holy name, Jesus, our Savior. So all these things come together in tonight's rather unusual service, sometimes called the Watch Night Service. Let us stand. We turn to page one of the order of service. Light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory, displayed in the face of Christ. God met us face to face, and we have seen the light of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We pray together. At this time we would turn on the um, the lights and the candles at the altar would be lit, but we've already lit them. And the early church would sing this hymn. Now this hymn is, dates to the 200s, so this is a time when the grandchildren of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John would still have been alive. This song was written. Let us, we don't know the tune, but we know the words. Let us say it together. O oh, gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O oh, Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now is the
seated. I wonder if anyone has a cup of warm water. Someone asked my wife for a cup of warm water. We will hear the first reading from Ecclesiastes, which is read to us by Matthew. Thank you. Yes, 
was reconciled in the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal to us. We implore you in Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I will tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Here and so we draw together in the third song, in the same fashion, saying, You God and my God, earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you, my whole being longs for you, in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I thirst for you in the sanctuary, and be held in the power and the glory. Trust the life and the second life, my lips will glorify you. I will be fully satisfied with the richest of the earth, with singleness but not with praise. On my bed I remember you, I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you, your right hand of hosts. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now it will be forever. Amen. And the third prayer. Let us pray. Lord, Lord in the name of the Son of God, we pray. The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you.
collect for the festival of the holy name. We say together, Eternal Father, we go to your incarnate Son, the Holy Name of Jesus, to be the sign of our salvation. Find in every heart, we pray, the love of him who is the Savior of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Let us stand with our hymn book and turn to number 1086 as Alex leads us in uh, Life of the World. 1086. Before he was conceived in the womb. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let's pray, Lord, we give thanks uh, for the beautiful, wonderful, mighty name of Jesus. We love your name, Lord Jesus, Saviour, that you have been our Saviour and our friend, that you are our hope. We love you, Jesus, and we love your name. We worship you, Lord, this evening as we come to the end of the old year and the beginning of the new. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated, dear friends. <laughs> Now, um, I want to invite folks to share testimony of thanksgiving, or, or a testimony, if you would, um, just to open the pulpit or the mic, as it were, and ask anybody who would like to come up. You do have to speak up a little bit so people outside can hear if possible. Uh, bring your best voice. Imagine you're angry with your children or something. Whatever helps. <laughs> and uh, raise up your voice if you have a testimony to share. We sometimes call this 30 second testimonies. But I think it would also be good to share uh, a thanksgiving if there's something you want to thank God for in the past year. Now I'm going to give you a minute to think about this. And while you're thinking about your 30 second testimony, you may want to just stand up in your place and speak out. You don't have to come out the front if you like. Or you could come out the front and stand here on the step and share it as you prefer. Whatever you do, please use the boldest voice you can. While you're thinking, I want to share a 30-second sermon with you. Isaiah chapter 43, just to give you a minute to think. In Isaiah 43, now this is what the Lord says. He created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel. Here's a word for you for the new year. Fear not. You remember the message of the angels. The word of Jesus was, fear not. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. Number one point in the sermon is, you should not be afraid. You should not fear anything in life or in death, because we have been redeemed. That means we've been bought with a price. To be redeemed is to be lost and to be bought back out of slavery, so to speak, by a price. We have been redeemed. We have been bought with a price. That's point number one. Point number two, I have summoned you by name, you are mine. Point number two for the new year is you are not your own, you are called by the Lord by name. You are his son and daughter, or daughter, you belong to the Lord. You are not lost, you are not anybody, you are not nobody. You are son or daughter of the King of Kings. What was point number one? Fear yeah. you know not, because you are redeemed. What's point number two? I have called you by name, you are mine. I have summoned you, I have called you by name, you are mine. And number three, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Third point is, God is constant. Come what may, we belong to the Lord, we come from Him, we return to Him. You are redeemed, you are called by name, you belong to him, and he is faithful. That's the sermon. Anybody got a thanksgiving? Are there many people outside, Brian? Right? How many are there? How many are outside? Eight. Well, I'm thankful that there's people outside. As well as inside. Would anybody like to thank God for anything in the last year? or share a testimony, or an answer to prayer, or a thanksgiving. Yes. Big voice. You shared last year, thank you. Yes. Thank you for stepping forward in this year. Um, I, I like to thank God for uh, giving salvation for my parents. 
uh, they were baptized uh, in the middle of July in their 80s. Uh, it's amazing and it's a miracle. Okay. So I'm going to translate. So Lani is giving thanks for her parents who were baptized in July. It was a miracle and she's amazed that they came to faith and were baptized. Can you hear her also? Yes. Oh, I don't need to translate. <laughs> Do I need to translate? No. Oh, okay. Sorry, Lani. Go on. The second one is uh, I thank God for um, setting me free from my addiction. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Well, that was an answer to prayer. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, Mary, thank you. Um, I so please stand, please stand. You can project that towards the back. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, I want to thank God for using other Christians to answer his words to us. Um, so, Pastor Stephen talked about words of knowledge, and I want to thank God for sending words of knowledge to Jamie um, that were very helpful to me earlier this year in helping me know what I needed to do. Thank you, Mary. That's encouraging. I'd like to say a thanks to God for the Philippine Fellowship leaders who organized the wonderful party tonight. And for Alex and the wonderful Adonai band, it was really was a great, happy occasion. And so good to see people of all nations dancing and celebrating and enjoying life together. I'm sure it makes the heart of God glad. So I'd like to thank God for our leaders of our Philippine Fellowship. Can we give them a, a clap? And thank you for all our church leaders, what a wonderful bunch you are. I think we should also say that we are thankful for Matt because it was his birthday last night. So <laughs> thank God for, for Matt and for his uh, participation and faithfulness. Uh, he's always available for setup and pack up and PA and mixing and helping and encouraging. So we thank God for you, Matt. I'm also so thankful to Alex, who's so talented, so gifted. And yet he humbly blesses us uh, poor folk with his wonderful gift. He could go to so many churches in Macau, but I'm so thankful to God that he comes and shares it with us. And uh, we, he's our brother, and we love him, and we thank God for all our worship leaders. But obviously tonight we see that he has a special gift. And uh, I thank God often for, for, for you, Alex, and for your ministry to us. I'm just going to keep going if you don't say anything. <laughs> Yesterday was the 30th anniversary of my landing at Kai Tak Airport to be a missionary priest in Hong Kong and Macau. So today is the first day of the fourth decade of my work and life and service being a missionary priest in Hong Kong and Macau. I vividly remember the day that I left my little home, which I now own, strangely. Um, and my parents bade me farewell at the airport and I it was very uh, hot in Canberra and I took my cold jacket because we heard that the weather was very cold at this time in Hong Kong and sure enough it was quite cool when I got off the plane. Although it was strange because it was cool but humid, which never happens in Australia. So, I mean that might not mean much to you but it, 30 years means a lot to me and um, I just thank God I'm still alive. And I uh, thank God I'm so blessed with my wonderful wife uh, helping me and being my partner and friend. So I thank God for this 30 years, keeping me alive and keeping me going. And I thank God that somehow, strangely, we came to be with you in Macau. Wow, what a wonderful blessing. You know, I, I remember visiting Macau many years ago, about 20, 25 years ago, and I thought what a horrible place it was. <laughs> It was very dark, you know, and I went into the old Lisboa Hotel uh, Casino to check out, you know, what all the excitement was about. And it was the most dark and dour and depressing and smoky place I'd ever been in my life. And I, 
I'd only seen casinos in James Bond movies. And I thought, oh, this is like hell. It's not as bad now, it's like really different now. It's a lot better than our experience to go into those places, but it was so miserable. And I thought, oh, this is horrible. It's a horrible place. And I thought, oh, I don't never want to come here. <laughs> so God has a sense of humor. They never say never. And he brought me here and I've been so blessed to be here with you all. I think it's 13 years ago now. Any other Thanksgivings? Come on. No one thankful for anything? Yes, stand up. Take the mask off. Hold forth. Yes, thank you, Lord, for giving my daughter to university. Yeah, Many yeah. miracles there. Through all the lockdowns and quarantines, she made it. And recently, the Lord provided her friend's best mother, just moved two hours away from where she is, so she can spend Christmas with her. That's really important. Really yeah. important. Yeah. Thank you all. Hallelujah. That's great. Thanksgiving. Well, when you, you teenage kids, your kids go overseas to university, you really need a family friend nearby to keep an eye on them. That's so helpful and so important. Thank God for that. It's a wonderful Thanksgiving. Has anyone else had a Thanksgiving? I know it's tough after the tough year we've had, the tough time. We feel we've had a tough year and a tough time. So it's good to drag up the things that we're thankful for. Yes, Hilda, yes. thank you. Um, I just want to thank God for Deborah. I'm not sure if this is going to be her last service here, um, but she's leaving on Monday. And it was through massaging Alice, and I met her. Otherwise, I would have never met her. And she's so worldly, so knowledgeable, and such a good friend. So I just want to thank her, and then for you know all the time she spent with Alice, and even though she's never met her before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good thing to be thankful for. So Deborah was here at the 9 o'clock service and heard about us and went to help massage him. What a wonderful thing to do. You know, out of all of everybody, you were the one that went. I think that deserves a clap. Thank God. Thank God for that. And you found a friend there as well. That's a wonderful Thanksgiving. And I also, actually, that reminds me, I want to give thanks for all the people who massage us. There's a number of you here who go every week faithfully and it's been a tremendously important witness to his parents. If we hadn't been doing that, I think they would have really felt abandoned uh, by God and by the community. So those of you who go and do that every week, in some sense you represent the congregation and the body of Christ. And I think it's incredibly servant-hearted and important. I'm sure you do it out of love because you enjoy it. But can we also thank all those people at Mass Art Bellas? It's a great testimony to look after that dear boy. That's a great reminder. And we need to pray God's blessing for Deborah as she moves to Indonesia to work there. And when is the flight now? Very soon. On Monday. On Monday. God bless you, dear. So, not quite the last service yet. Anyone else want to say thanks for anything? Yes, brother. I want to thank God for. They're going to speak that way with the big boys. <laughs> yes, uh, I want to thank God for. Uh, last yesterday is supposed to be my last piece of mm. yeah so i got still one year to go i don't know if uh, for the next coming years we're going to be with you again so uh, i still have one year to stay with you now mm. so hopefully uh, for after one year then we're going to bring you again so i thank god for another year <coughs> Stay here. Wow, that, well, we, we're so thankful. We Maybe your wife is not thankful, but we're very thankful. <laughs> um, no joke. And um, if you ever, if that happens again, let us know closer than the, the, the week before. Give us, maybe we can help somehow. Maybe the community can help. Uh, yeah. But uh, anyway, we want you to do what's best for you. Well, thank God. That's it. Well, we dodged the bullet there. That's a big Thanksgiving. Well, that's wonderful. Some wonderful Thanksgivings coming up. Anyone, anybody outside thankful for anything? Thank you, darling. <laughs> and also with you. Other than that, anyone else? How about you, Diana? Are you thankful for anything? No? Are you thankful for mommy? Say yes. <laughs> anyone, anyone else? 
All right. Yes. Oh, Miranda, lovely. I am must be very, more. very thankful for this community and especially our kids' ministry and Sunday school and the team leader. Mm -hmm. And that gives my kids a chance to really grow in God's love mm -hmm. with everyone here and not here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I sent some text messages to the church council the last couple of days. Maybe I can share them with you as Thanksgiving. Um, one was that within the income and expenditure of the camp, we broke even by, I think, 300 and, what was it, $360 or something. Um, we, we did have a bit of an overdraft, uh, but that's held by the hotel as a credit. So when we signed up, we booked too many places. That was an accounting error uh, on my part. Um, but uh, we booked too many places and uh, things got very complicated, you know, because the price kept changing and kept being cancelled. But anyway, long story short, we finished the camp and within the income and expenditure of the camp, we broke even by about 360 bucks. And um, within that, there's about 44,000 in, in scholarships given to people who came on camp who needed support. And that was all fully supported by other members of the congregation, honestly. So, it was really a wonderful, a wonderful effort by everybody to have that church camp and have everybody be able to go that wanted to go. So uh, isn't that wonderful? Should we thank God for that? I mean, I think that's amazing. Well, let's thank the Lord for that. That's, that's amazing. And I, don't, I also don't have the numbers with me, but I think uh, in 2019, our average attendance was 168. And I think last year it was 186. So we're not dead yet. <laughs> Not, you know, it's not huge growth, but we're, we're still still alive and growing. And during this time of COVID, I'm just enormously thankful to God for the life and growth and for you all. Wonderful. Thank you, as Miranda said, for the wonderful children's ministry. And who wants to be the lucky last? Oh, Professor, thank you. I look forward because Steve says he can't hear me. Yeah, project. I know, I know.
we declare together we believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of the name, one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. In the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We hope for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our prayers. Let us turn to Form 4 on page 32. Actually, let's turn to Form 6, I'm sorry, on page 36. Keep going, page 36. Lord, in peace we pray to you, Lord God. As we come to tonight, to the end of the year, we give thanks to you for all of these thanksgivings that we have mentioned earlier this evening, for our families, friends, community, ministry, for all the blessings that you've poured out upon us here in Macau of protection, of good governance, of good health, of opportunity to work and to live, to have another year, as Alex shared, of life and work. We pray for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends and neighbours, and for those who are alive. We pray for our city of Macau and for the cities from which we come around the world. We ask for your blessing and protection upon them, Lord. Keep them from harm and from disaster. We pray for this community, the nation of China and our nations, and for the world. For all who work for justice, freedom and peace. We pray for the environment and for good stewardship of the seas and of the lands and of the sky and the air. We pray for the just and proper use of your creation, to the victims of hunger, fear, injustice and oppression. We pray for those in war and persecution and in need, for those in prison and in trouble in sickness and in trial at this time. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. We especially offer up to you for your blessing and help all those nurses and doctors around the world serving you in uh, hospitals and clinics around the world to care for those who are unwell. We pray for this church for the churches of Macau, for revival, and for great growth and life, for repentance and holiness to break forth. And we pray for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all those who proclaim the gospel. We pray for all church leaders, for leaders of all ministries, for bishops and overseers throughout the world, for pastors and all ministers and priests, especially for Andrew, our Archbishop, and our Bishop in Macau, for all who serve God in his church. Lastly, let us take a minute of silent prayer to lift before the Lord uh, the special needs of our own hearts tonight, our thanksgivings, 
and our prayers for the coming of year. Let us offer them to the Lord now. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We, we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray and give thanks for all who have died in the faith of Christ, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, yet let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins, saying together the prayer on page 37, Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. Hear these words of absolution. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sin through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May we stand for the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
to whom we you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. We turn to page 32, and as our Savior Christ taught his disciples, we are confident to pray, Our Father in heaven, Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and let us feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us join together as we give thanks for these mysteries that we have received. It's a prayer on page 25. We pray together, Eternal God, Heavenly Father, in the gracious name of you have given us the spiritual fruit in the sacrament of His body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. May our strength and courage to love and serve you. I'm going to do something naughty. I'm going to try and lead a song that I haven't led since I was 15. And I haven't practiced and I can't see. So. <laughs> So this is a song that um, I used to sing with my friends when we were 15 years old in church, that's 45 years ago. The reason I wanted the dear lady to keep the communion is because uh, some people um, take the wafer with them as a lucky charm, and um, we don't really want people to do that. It's not to be taken as a magic thing or a lucky charm, it's to be consumed. Let's stand as we sing number 1039. I call us a day.
Sure. 